Have we actually been doing solar wrong all along? Here at Artisan Electrics, you've seen us do a multitude of solar PV installations, but this new technology claims to blow conventional systems out of the water. Experts are saying that this could make solar PV systems 20% more efficient. That's why in this video, we installed two new technologies to see if there's actually a much better way to do solar. Now you might notice it's chucking it down with rain. Today is actually day two. We've nearly finished the install. Let's jump to day one where it was much better weather. So there are three things that are a little bit different about this install today. One is that we're installing these bifacial panels. Number two is that we're using the N-phase microinverters rather than the usual string or solar edge system that we go for. And number three, you're gonna to have to wait till later on in the video to find out what that is. So the first step with any roof is to measure up the roof hooks. We remove a tile, the roof hook goes like that and a couple of screws go into the roof joist here. We measure them so that they're nicely spaced, not too far apart, spaced close enough to give a good support to the rail. And then we have to grind out a little bit on the back of the tile here where it will sit on top of the hook so that the roof tile sits nice and flush with the roof and there's no gap. <laughs> <laughs> so Ben from a heatable just managed to crash his drone into a tree. Let's go and see what's happened. Oh, That's the I've ever done that, that is classic, <laughs> absolutely classic. I, I've ne you know, I've never crashed a drone once uh, before. Oh no! It's, it's okay, mate. It's okay. Can you see it? I can't believe I did that. Oh, okay. I can see the picture on it at least. It's it's on the floor somewhere. Oh, there it is. Yeah, I can see it. Okay, it's still intact. My daily moment of stupidity is done. Last week we flew into the scaffolding. Ah, uh, wow. And, uh, maybe we should get some training on it. Yeah, mm, yeah you know, have you got a license for that? It's 249 <laughs> grams, so it's all right, isn't it? It's perfect. <laughs> you got any spare tiles? Yeah, right, it's really good. Okay, what I'm doing here yeah, is the same as all in the other jobs we do previously. As you see, we've got to notch them out, and you put the tile back. That notch will just sit over the bracket, and it'll keep the tiles flush on the roof. Guys getting ready to pull an armoured cable through the loft, I'll hand you over to Ruben. Sick. <laughs> yeah, boy. Alright, basically, cameraman's asked me to explain. I work on commissions, so I'm not too fast, but um, we're basically just pulling this cable up, so it's going to be joined into a switch fuse, going over to a separate board for the solar and battery and that. But we're just pulling it into the loft so it can go across. So let me introduce you to, <laughs> this is Ben, co-founder of Heatable, and yep. he's gonna tell us a bit more about these panels and what's so unique about them, because on the front they look pretty standard, right? Yeah. But flip them around, and on the back, there's something quite unique about these, so tell us. So pretty much all panels um, use the same cell technology. You've got two types, one's called P-type, one's called N-type. This is an N-type panel, so the more premium cell of the two variants. The main difference with this panel compared to a conventional panel is it's bifacial. So on this side, on the front side, it's rated at 420 watts um, and it's positively tested. So it's a minimum of 420, not plus or minus. On the back, you've got the exact same cells that are on the front on the back of the panel. What the panel also features is a clear intersection. So if you can see there, my hand moving around. So as you've got light in the atmosphere hitting this panel, it's obviously got light all, around, all the way around the panel and you're gonna get that extra generation. Where it really comes in is when it's really high intense light. So on a nice summer's day, generally black facing panels will drop in performance. With these panels, the front what may drop because it's a black panel but the back will pick up that extra performance so in sort of like high temperatures or high efficiency light you get much more performance so you're talking about reflected light off the back of the roof basically is that how it works i think it's what's one of the benefits it's something that people get caught up on by facial is mm. they'll say look the roof's going to be sat there it's a gray roof mm. it's not going to do anything it's not so much about that, it's the best way I can describe it is like the stickiness of the cells. Mm -hmm. So UV light 
wickedly powerful, mm. high radiation. When it hits a panel, it doesn't just bounce off, yeah. it goes through that panel. Yeah. And this, this is a triple layer cell and it's basically designed to capture as much light on the way through. Any residual bounce back that comes through, that's an additional benefit. Mm. You know, light on the side, ambient light flying around, you're going to get some pickup. Nice. And I saw a video where you guys basically put a normal panel on an array of bifacial panels. Yeah. And the effect was quite significant in the extra, well, the extra generation from the bifacial or yeah. you could say the lower amount of generation from the non the non panel. panel. Yeah, so basically what happened was I smashed um, a panel yeah. on the day, it was actually my fault. <laughs> and because these are a pretty unique panel, they're not stocked everywhere. So we went to a merchant and bought a generic 420 watt panel because we wanted to get the array on for the client. Mm put it on, but because we're using the end phase system, you can see every individual panel's performance. Yeah. And straight away, something we didn't realize was that we were getting about 20% more generation on this panel, same roof, using the same inverter, yeah. compared to a generic DC panel. So, you Quite know- a cool real world test. Then, yeah, it was it? brilliant. It was a nightmare for me because it was like four hours away from home, I had to drive and get a panel, but <laughs> 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 yeah, it came in good. Awesome, well, thanks for showing us that. Yeah, fantastic. So we're just uh, installing the rail now and measuring it off 13 and a half mil from the roof so that it's all level and correctly spaced. Uh, it means that the panels will be nice and close to the roof and it makes it easier for the bird protection. So I just measure that off and then just tighten it up. Perfect. Have we done strip the ends or anything? No, no you just guard them in, mate. Guard them in. You're just separating. That's yeah. literally it. Oh, so it's got don't two don't little holes in there. Yeah, and yeah, then that goes in. The so these are the M phase branch connectors, and they basically just plug into the side of the M phase microinverter, like and they loop in and out between the panels. Nice. So the reason that we're drilling from the outside in rather than going through the soffit is that the soffit is a little bit suspect. We don't know whether it's asbestos or not. It's certainly some kind of fibre cement board, so we just want to avoid it just to be safe. And so, hey, he's in we are. by the looks of it. Got a rod in through the hole there, and that's where we're going to bring our cables through down to our mystery battery. So these are the end phase microinverters that we're using on this particular project. And to explain what it is, it's basically a mini inverter that goes under every panel. So a little bit like when we, you've seen probably in our videos, we've done solar edge optimizers. Each panel has an optimizer under it. Each panel has a microinverter under it. And that means that there's no need for a separate inverter anywhere else. You've simply got one inverter per panel. And the advantage is that it means you've got individual panel monitoring, similar to solar edge, but it also means you've not got a separate string inverter somewhere else. So it speeds up the installation. It means that you've got AC cables coming straight off the roof, no DC cables coming down to an inverter, no need for DC isolators or anything like that. We will do a full deep dive video on these if you guys would like to see it. So you basically got an AC branch cable which plugs in here and that just links between the different microinverters and then the DC cables from the solar panel plug into the side here with the MC4 connectors. This is an IQ7 Plus, there is an IQ8 range now as well which we're offering and seems like a really good solution. So I've just seen these guys trying to cut the rail with this. It's not even Makita, it's like Sisvis. Never even heard of it before. Let me know if you're a fan of Sisvis tools. But I was like, <laughs> let me show you guys. Let's show you guys how it's done properly. So we're gonna do a side by side race of cutting the rail. Hilti Bandsaw versus John T. Sisvis. Pretty decent to me. It's pretty, it's pretty fresh. Carl Gaffer. Right. Three. Three. Two. One. Oh, <laughs> Jordan, you can do that. I got it. I got it stuck. <laughs> that was awful. I right, want. Well, 
one more go, I think. Three, Three two, two, one. one. <laughs> <laughs> like a hot knife through butter, as they say. <laughs> yeah, it's just like a bandsaw, so it just ah, okay. turns like that. It's constant. Yeah. It's not vibrating back and forth. It's actually rotating. Gonna need some bleeping on this video, mate. <laughs> So these microinverters just clamp onto the rail here with these little rail clamps. So the AC cable literally just plugs in like that. Right, so here at Heater Ball, we're big advocates for AC because it's super safe and we don't like DC cables. When you do fit DC cables to a solar system, you have to make off one of these, it's called an MC4. So we've got Jez from Jay Cook and we've got, jo is it Jod? No. Oh, mate, you don't even know my name. Go on, what is it? <laughs> Ruben. Ruben, sorry. Ruben from Artisan. We're going to see who can do it faster, but just to make it a bit more interesting, we're going to give them a DC shock so it feel like they're actually a DC cable. So we're going to time it. I'm going to go straight to it now. Right, three, two, one, go. Oh, Lord have mercy. <laughs> ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah! Oh! oh. Yeah. <laughs> Yo! Oh my, oh my goodness! God. <laughs> oh. Oh. oh! How am I supposed to unclip ah, it? Okay. Oh, mate. Finished? Yeah, done. Put it on you. Oh. I just want you to feel how it's like, mate. That's a kid. You know what? Why is it not the right? Yeah, because it's not stuck up. Oh, right. It's not stuck up. <laughs> oh, oh! Yeah, yeah, see? How bad is that? <laughs> That's mad. Okay, I did. Oh. <laughs> oh, my arm's still shaking it, you know. I don't, why do I not trust you? Is this going to blow my Apple Watch up? <laughs> it's alright, it's just <laughs> I must be, oh yeah, yeah, oh! Oh, look at that. Oh, that is so weird. That is properly like having a belt, honestly. That is, that is, oh. They should do that in electrician school, like. This is what it's going to feel like if it happens. So you can see under here how the light passes through the panel, reflects off the roof and back onto the reverse side of the panel where you also have solar cells that are generating solar energy. So this is the mystery battery that I was talking to you about earlier in the video. It's one that we've not installed before. It's an Alpha ESS system. 5 kilowatt hybrid inverter, 5.7 kilowatt hour modules, but 5.4 kilowatt hour usable. And you can stack up to five modules on this system. Seems quite good. Looks wise, I think it looks pretty smart. As you can see, it's outside, so it's designed to be outside, which is good as well. And apparently it's really easy to commission. So we're gonna see how that goes. So this is bird protection, a little bit different to the stuff that we usually use, but it looks quite neat and it is specially designed for these REA panels and it just clips on the side. It's quite nice and I always bang on about it, but if you're getting solar, get bird protection. The number of times we've seen pigeons nesting under panels, causing all sorts of chaos, making lots of horrible noise and mess, which is not what you want. So if you're getting in quote, make sure you check whether bird protection is included. So the guys are busy working away here, doing a really nice, neat job in the meter box. Basically, we've got quite a lot of things that we need to tie all together to make this installation work smoothly. So we put a switch fuse in here, which feeds the renewables consumer unit for the battery and the M-phase microinverters, that's that. We put a main isolator switch in here as well. The reason is that we split the tails. There's a main consumer unit here in the house, which is running off this Henley block now. And then our renewables consumer unit fed from the switch fuse is running off the Henley block as well. But it's important to always have a, a single point of isolation. So now we've added this so that that one isolator switch will turn off everything in the house for safety purposes. So we've got two CTs or current transformers here, one for the M phase system here, that's measuring the grid power, essentially how much the house is importing or exporting from the grid. And then this one here, which is for the battery storage system. Both of these are going through this box. This is the meter for the battery. And then the M phase meter CT will be looped through to the M phase meter, which is in the loft. And uh, yeah, nearly there. 
So for those of you who may be researching solar and are not yet solar experts, what makes this system different? So here's some footage of one of my favorite installs we've done so far at Artisan Electrics. But you'll notice that this install is quite different. There's a lot of parts missing, but are they missing? Let's take a look. Where's the inverter? Well, that's the clever thing about this system. There is not one inverter, but there are eight inverters and the inverters are under the panels. With a traditional string inverter, if you have shading on your solar panels, then it can bring down the whole array. And here we've got shading, right? That south, it's a south facing roof. You've got all these trees. So when the sun is lower in the sky, particularly during the end of the year and beginning of the year, there's gonna be quite a lot of shading on that roof. So in that case, you need either optimizers or microinverters. And the reason for that is so that each panel is managed separately. So if there's some shading on it, it doesn't bring down the whole array. Now, often in the past, we've fitted solar edge inverter with optimizers, but in this case, we're doing something a bit different. So when I showed you this earlier, these are what I was talking about. These are micro inverters, and it's basically one inverter for one panel, and each panel is managed and optimized individually by its own inverter. And what that means is less equipment on the wall in your house. Now there are obvious advantages <laughs> as an installer and a customer not have to have a string inverter on the wall. For us as installers, sometimes we struggle with space to fit everything. We've not always got a massive wall where we can put an inverter, batteries and everything all in one place. So having these eliminates that from the mix. However, you might think, well, there's some downsides as well. I mean, if you've got one of these under every panel, surely that's more things that can go wrong. And I am gonna do a dedicated video about M-phase microinverters and full installation and talk about that, because I think it's an interesting talking point. But I'm getting more and more confident in these as a product, and we're looking at offering these as part of our standard package now at Artisan, because we believe that it's a great way to simplify things, to speed up installation, and to cope with that issue of shading in certain situations. But there's not really any one size fits all package for everyone. I still think we've got to look at each individual install and find the best solution for that customer. Yesterday we were lightning fast. We had like 10 people all working away. It was chaos, but we got most of the work done. And today's just really buttoning up and commissioning, but everything slows down like that snail because it's raining, it's cold. And it's all the little finishing touches which do actually take time, you know? So although this system is actually really fast to install because of the simplification with a lot less equipment needed on the wall, etc., it still needs that finishing touch with all the labeling, the commissioning, the testing and inspection, certification, just making sure that everything's buttoned up properly to get everything absolutely spot on. So when you finish your end phase, the, the customer handover tells you to talk right. through the kit and, it, yeah. and then the last bit sends them an email. Ben was telling me yesterday that if one panel like goes down or something, it automatically sends them an alert. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that yeah, you know, really like, good. yeah, yeah. It's quite, yeah. Quite and clever. it's good because you can monitor each individual panel. Yeah. That's the bit I like about it. Yeah. So it's Wi-Fi configuration straight away. There you go, route is connected. So then these are just your standard stuff you go through. Meter on the grid side, G99, which is done, max feed, max in, job done. Job done. Great. Finished. It's pretty easy. Yeah, it's it nice. is simple. So the sun's shining, the system is generating energy. We've just set up everything on the customer's app for him. It's all looking good. So what do you think? Is this new technology the next game changer in the solar industry? We'd love to hear all of your thoughts in the comments below. For me, I'm definitely gonna be specking these bifacial panels and M-phase microinverters for some of our projects, because I do think they are really great products that can speed up installation and provide a higher output for customers who have shading or limited sized roofs. Now, it's been a pleasure working with Heatable. Thank you to Heatable for sponsoring today's video. And if you do want to find out more, there's a link below where you can find out more about Heatable and what they do. They are looking for more installers to join their network as well. So if you're interested in doing some solar installs like this, then head to the link below to find out more. Thank you for watching and we'll see you on the next one.